Welcome back to the Lesser Women's Wrap-Up Show. Today is a super fun episode. I'm super excited about this one. I'm joined by James. He seems to be feeling better. So welcome back, James. How are you doing? Yeah, good. Feeling better. Um, and after two great wins for both our teams this weekend, it's been a good weekend. Yeah, it's a great weekend. And it's only Tuesday. It feels like the week has flown by already, but it's only Tuesday. <laughs> and we're joined by Lesser Legend Matt Piper. I'm so excited to get to chat with you. How are you doing today? I'm very good, thank you. Thanks for having me on. Honoured. Feel honored to be on. I've been on <laughs> Beyond the 90 before, but obviously never with you, Hannah. So um really privileged to be on. Yeah, I, I spoke with you yesterday on BBC and I said earlier, you're in my house now. This is our turf. <laughs> yeah, you did. And it was a and, and let me say it was a unbelievable debut on the radio. Because sometimes well, a lot of, well, you. sometimes a lot of people get nervous going on the radio for the first time, but I thought you were terrific, fun, engaging. And the way that you became a Leicester City supporter was really interesting. Um and you sort of were I, I think I felt that you was kind of like embarrassed that you became a Leicester fan that way but I thought it was a I thought it was a great story yeah well thank you that <laughs> that means a lot I wouldn't say I'm embarrassed I just think it's a I'm living up the Canadian stereotype and I'm probably not helping by wearing a lumberjack shirt right now either but <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was so easy talking to you guys and I had so much fun it it was just an awesome time if you ever want to have me back <laughs> I think every me. week I think I think Strings and Owen said we've got to get her on most weeks if we can and it was brilliant I think it'd be I think it would be a great part of the show. That's what we spoke about after, because obviously I, now the now the women's team is professional, um, and sort of come in house under under Leicester City. I think it would be it would be fantastic to have you on. You know, most weeks um, talking about the women's game and promoting that more. Um, so we're looking forward to that. I think in the future. I hope I've not spoke out of turn. I know Owen's on next week and. I'm sort of already gave you the job, but <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks so much. I like that means the world. I was just happy to come on once and to be invited back. That's awesome. You guys are all so nice over there too. And it's just so easy working with you guys, even though it was only on once. So that says a lot. Yeah, so you again. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Thank you. <laughs> so obviously you've been on beyond the 90, like you said before covering the men's side and now we've got you on the women's side. So mm. this is definitely going to be, really awesome having it from your perspective so just kind of like starting off i kind of want to get some info like what was it like being at leicester for you and like what's the atmosphere like over there um well leicester was so i grew up in leicester so leicester was my hometown club i supported i supported leicester since i was a kid so obviously and i came all the way through the youth team so i came i was at leicester i think from eight years old so eight all the way through um, and sort of got in and around the first team around about 17 years old in the Martin O'Neill days. So I'm sort of quite, a, I turned 40 this year. So I'm, and I look it as well when I've not got my hat on, but we, we won't go there anyway. Um, so yeah, I sort of got in and around it with Martin O'Neill and then sort of got a few injuries here and there, but then, then made my debut around about 19. Um, and it was in the relegation season of 2002. Um, but it was, I don't know, when you play for your hometown club, I don't know if other guys are like this. I, I don't really speak about it often, but kind of an electric love, sort of all those beautiful superlatives you can talk about. Um, that's what it feels like. You know, it's your dream since you were a kid. So when you fulfill one of your dreams and, playing for Leicester City in the first team against all the, the Leicester City fans was unbelievable for me. Yeah, that's so awesome because, like, you look at the women's side. We've talked with Jonathan Morgan, and we kind of discussed it a bit beforehand starting. And just the community they have at the women's side. And even, like, if you look at Nacho saying in his post-match interview, like, there's such a community at the club. Mm -hmm. And even from a fan's perspective, like, it's so visible. And that's just so nice to see. And... As an international fan, like I feel like I'm involved with everything, like even with the locals. It's just so cool and there's such a great community. It is. Well, I think you're seeing it more now because of social media and the likes of podcasts like this. We're all sort of connecting with each other, but Leicester, and I'm not just saying it because because I'm on the show and you, you've mentioned it, but it's always been like that. You know, the, I still speak to the groundsmen at Leicester that are still there from 
when I played there. Um, the kit man is still the same. Mako, who is the kit man of the first team, was the kit man when, when I was there. He's one of my best friends in the world. Um, all the people behind the scenes, it is a really family orientated club. And I think the fans understand that, but the fans reflect that as well. You know, I was speaking to James just before we came on and fans meeting up before games and sort of socialising before they come into the football. And that's why I think this season, especially, who knows where Leicester would be if the fans were in there because they've got a fantastic team, fantastic manager, but they've also got fantastic fans that haven't been in the ground that always act as sort of the 12th man for Leicester City. So, you know, we could be, we could be fighting it out for another Premier League title with Man City if the fans were allowed in this season. Yeah, that's true. And I would love to see that. <laughs> yeah, well, we got to get you over. I, I got to get over. We need this pandemic to end. We need planes to just start operating again. <laughs> I got to get over there. I'm exactly. so eager. Hopefully the FA Cup final. We've got Manchester United at the weekend. Massive game, but I think Leicester are capable uh, of beating Manchester United. And if we get near the final and fans are allowed in, hopefully, Hannah. That could be your first experience of being in the ground to watch a Leicester match. <laughs> that would be amazing. And I was speaking with someone uh, yesterday and she was saying like, because our women's side are also in the FA Cup and yeah. they were just drawn against Liverpool. So I think we have a lot of hope that we're going to make it farther. And she said, if our women's squad make it into the FA Cup final, you need to come out here. <laughs> so now of I've got course. the men's and the women's being held against me to get out there. So I'm going to start saving up real fast. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You have to. I mean, it's been a fantastic season, not only for the for the for the men, but for for the women as well. And I've enjoyed watching the games. I, I even got to commentate on a game a few weeks ago. The the game that they got knocked out of the cup was that the semi final. Yeah, against Bristol City. Semi final against Bristol City. I did the last twenty minutes commentating and. Um, yeah, we just missed out on that occasion, but hopefully, who knows? You know, two teams through in the FA Cup, and hopefully, both find it out at the top of the league. Um, so it's good times. It's good times to be a Leicester City fan at the minute for the women and the men. Yeah, it's real good times. Yeah, and looking at the women's side in particular, we've seen their top now three points clear. Um, Hannah doesn't do predictions for some reason, pipes every single week on this show. <laughs> I say they're going to be champions and she sits in the corner and doesn't say a word. Um, <laughs> I, pr I predict wins every week and Hannah doesn't predict anything. Um, so as soon as I say the, like, I predict something, it's going to bite me and then I'm going to be the one that everyone comes after. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the problem sometimes with working on, you know, working in the media, on podcasts, on the radio. You know, when you put your opinion out there, it, it can seem like it come back to bite you. But my way, my way of looking at it is I, I look at the team. I look how good they are. I'm talking about the women now. I look how good they are. Um, they've just beat a Durham side that, it, that haven't been beaten all season, right? They've only yeah. drawn the games. That was their um, first loss. Yeah, so it was their biggest test of the season. They came through it. They're looking confident. They've got a great manager in Jonathan Morgan. They've got some wonderful players. Um, so I look at it more like, let's just talk about facts. They've got four games left, five games yeah. left. Four, I, I believe, yeah. Yeah, four games left. I think they can go on and, and secure the title now. And I hope that don't come back to bite me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you're right. I think uh, talking of things that bite you, a bit of a side issue. Uh, last year, um, last season, I predicted that we'd finish above Man United. Um, said it said it live on air. Somebody called me out, um, and we had a side bet that if we finished above Man United, she would do our podcast in a Leicester shirt. Um, so the last one of the season, I did the podcast in a Man United shirt, which I've never lived down. No, James, what are you doing? <laughs> I don't even want to know how you got a hold of a shirt. <laughs> when I made the bet, we were third. Miles clear of everyone. Mm. I thought it was safe, but that's football for you. So going back to the women's side, how has it been for you, Pipe, seeing the team progress this year from, from obviously going into the League of the Championship was a huge thing to then now be top and, and the win every, like I say, win every game. Um, Durham was a difficult test. They were very physical. 
Um, they played on a 3G pitch, which I don't really like anyway. Mm. Um, and then when I was younger, um, but they came past that test. Durham were very physical, but they came through that test with ease um, and played the football that Jonathan gets into playing. So I just wondered, from your point of view, how has it seen that team progress this season? Well, when I met him, I met Jonathan. I, I've met him a few times before, but never really spoke to him. But I met him uh, a week or so ago. We just bumped into each other and I, I had a chat with him. And the first thing that I had to say, because I'm a big believer in, um, you know, speak your truth. And I seen him. And the first thing I said before I even said hi, I said, what an incredible job he's doing, his staff are doing. Um, because it was a jump to the championship. For for him, for his staff, it's it was such a it was such a new thing to to go from the league that they was in into that league. I know they signed a few players at the time, um, but it's normally difficult. You have to find your feet in football and sort of bed everyone together. You you need plenty of you know hours on the coaching the coaching pitches. But he sort of hit the ground running as soon as they started the league. They've they've been there or thereabouts all season. Um, they went so far in the League Cup, they're still in the FA Cup. And and then to go and beat a side like Durham that haven't lost all season is, I said it on, on, on the radio the other day, I think he's just, him and his staff, and the way that the club have dealt with bringing the women's game into house, the training ground that they got, it, you know, there's a lot of things going on. And normally the, you know, form on the pitch suffers or it takes time to build a team that can go and have an assault on the league to try and get promoted. So the fact that all that has gone on, they've come, they're not through it yet, but they're, they're nearly there. Um, and the season that they've had, I think has been incredible. And I think we need to push it even more. So when I seen that, that Hannah was, you know, I followed Hannah as soon as I knew that she was trying to push the women's side of the game every time followed um I, I I look closely at Jade Morgan who's obviously in a in a sort of manager general manager's position um and we gotta we gotta thank our lucky stars we've got someone at the football club like Susan Whelan who's really you know driving the the women's side of the game and King Power um so we, we should feel I think very lucky at the minute for not only the men's side but the women's side as well yeah, absolutely. And as someone who follows the women's game so much, and I've seen it from a North American perspective with the leagues we have here, an international point of view, and like following the WSL and the championship, it's just so refreshing seeing what they're doing mm -hmm. because it's almost like there's still so much resist to the idea of women's football from a lot of fans of like men's sides and others. <laughs> But yeah. it's just what they're doing over there, like the fact that they've professionalized the women's side and they're giving them that funding, even moving them into Beaver Drive. Like, it's just so nice to see. And I'm beyond happy with what they're doing. And I'm just so happy for the players. And Jonathan is phenomenal. And I don't even know what they could do better because they're just doing so much great stuff already. They are. I mean, you know, we have to celebrate it. We have to celebrate it and we have to, I, I, I'm one for sure that feels we have to push it even more. Mm -hmm. So even when there's more done, we should push again because it's it's about inclusion. I run a, a, an academy myself and I, our academy has been running now for nearly four years and we've always, you know, wanted women's football teams, been open to women's football teams, but it, it, it's quite a struggle to get it started because if you only got two or three players um those girls in a male dominant environment that that at the academy that i run feel quite uncomfortable that so i want to try and you know push it as much as i can and if a team is doing fantastic in leicester you know the young girls looking up at, at some of the women now that are playing for leicester city in their city it will only inspire them to to get involved in football. And that's why I'm a massive, massive advocate of, of the women's side of the game. That's so awesome. <laughs> it's just so nice to hear that. Like I I it's nice seeing someone like you really pushing for the women's game to grow because there's not enough people to help out with that. And it's I have to give you so much thanks for doing that. It's just amazing. 
Yeah, and I've got a stepdaughter myself. So, you know, it has to be about inclusion and about inspiring the next generation and, you know, telling youngsters to follow their dream, boy or girl, follow your dream. And that's why I love it that, you know, Leicester, and it's helped the fact that they're doing so well this season. It really has. You know, they're at the top of the league. They're going to be inspiring so many young girls. And before I got into doing what I do now, after the football career, I went into schools uh, and coached in schools, boys and girls mixed. Um, and I used to love the feeling of maybe just introducing the game of football to a young girl that had no intention or no um, sort of belief that she could ever, you know, go on and play football. And if I could introduce the game and uh, show the enjoyment side of it and all the massive benefits that you can get from from playing football. Um, that's what I used to do. And it's this is just a continuation of that, what, you know, Jonathan, the football club are doing and, and all the women in the team at the minute. So it's brilliant to see. Yeah, and I think, I think that's kind of, when we started this pipes, it was kind of like, we need to push the team out there a bit more. Um, so I had a conversation with Hannah, asked Hannah if she'd front our show. So obviously she's a great advocate of women's football. Um, but we wanted to do this because there was so much support out there for Leicester City, but not really a platform like, like we've got now to, to kind of help promote the game. Um, I think one thing from my side is, is I've been helping Hannah uh, get guests on, etc. Is, mm. is is it's, it's been quite difficult um, people outside of Leicester to get people on because, as you know, with the men's team, we try to get opposition fans on. Um, it's difficult to find out who the opposition fans are, and, and I think from my point of view, is the media needs to do so much more. And it's great that Radio Leicester are kind of buying into that and doing quite a bit as well. But I think the media as a whole needs to do more. Um, me and Hannah often have conversations about, with men's football, it's quite easy to catch games. Mm. Um, but with the women's games, we're still waiting for for streams to be uploaded after the game. And, and we found it really difficult to get the word out around the women's game um, because of the way the media is. Um, and I know me and Hannah have, often have conversations about this. Yeah, and I think what's important is that people like yourselves, James and Hannah, um, you know, push it as much as you can. I know you guys are, and, you, you know, when you ask me to come on, I love coming on the show. You've got Owen coming on, you've got Ian coming on. And the more we talk about it and try and push it ourselves, because we can't rely on the media. That's clear to see now. You know, with any... Um, with anything that is that the media doesn't really want to engage in. So racism, um, you know, women's football, anything that is sort of on the edge that the media doesn't really want to talk about, they're not going to do it. So us as individuals, we're the ones that have to spread the message and try and get that momentum rolling. Um, and I think that's what's, that's what's happening at the minute. And kudos to you, James, for for seeing that and and getting Hannah on and doing something about it, mate. Thanks. And, and, and I just want to say as well, Leicester City have been amazing with us. Um, we've been working with Leicester City throughout the whole thing. Jonathan Morgan came on. Um, we're looking to get some of the players on at some point as well. But they've been so supportive of what we've done. Um, I've received messages from Jake Morgan about how we're doing. Um, so I think it's good that the club are acknowledging us and helping us to get that word out there. Yeah, I think as we spoke about earlier, I think they're such a family orientated club and they do a lot with with every, you know, um form out there. You know, there's they've they've done great work with especially Leicester in the community as well. It'd be good to try and get a a relationship with those guys if you haven't already, because they're fantastic. Um Alison Tripney, the lady that runs that, she is you know, so involved with everything and trying to push the club forward, especially from the community aspect side. Um, and as we talk about, Leicester is, um, the football club especially, is huge uh, in the community. And she's been brilliant since she came into that role. So if you can try and get a conversation with Alison, I know she will really help you push it out there. Okay. Yeah, we'll talk to Alison. <laughs> 
So I kind of wanted to go back to the women's side and our result against Durham. Obviously, it was massive. It was a difficult match, of course, because Durham was very physical. But I'm curious, like, even just all season in general, is there, like, a specific player or certain players that have just really stood out to you from the squad? Um, Ashley Plum Plumptor. Uh, and I say Ashley Plumptor because me and her are uh, um, ambassadors for the same charity. Um, so I've, I, I speak to Ashley on um, WhatsApp and uh, social media at times. Um, Remy Allen, Remy Allen, Tierney, who scored the two goals against Durham. Um, so there's there's players in Tierney. I mean, the, the two goals for Tierney in, in that Durham game, I know it was a tight game and they were really aggressive. Uh, I didn't see the game. But I've, you know, from what I heard, it, it sounded like a really aggressive game. That's what Durham are like. That's how they've got the results this season. Um, and off the back of what I'm really impressed about, the two results off the back of, um, obviously, when the party happened, the, the sort of lockdown party happened. But the way that I thought, the way that, that Jonathan dealt with that and some of the senior players, uh, especially Remy Allen, I listened to her interview about that. I think it was on BBC Radio Leicester. I thought it was dealt with fantastically. And that could have been a turning point in the season because it had been fantastic up to that point. And listen, I think the girls know at that point they were in the wrong. But the way that they, you know, there were the, the, the apologies came out, the club dealt with it in the right way, I thought. And that could have been a real turning point, and it wasn't. They came together, um, they got on with it, and they got the the really important win over Durham and, and Crystal Palace the game before that. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, one nil win over Crystal Palace. So to to bounce back from that was was really impressive, and it shows you how close the group are, I think, and how good the leadership of, of Jonathan and the team is. Yeah, uh, that whole situation it was dealt with like you said, it was great. And I've noticed how great of a leader Remy Allen is. And like, she does these press conferences and she, mm. she's just honest. She'll come yeah. out and she'll say what needs to be said. And I saw from some of the players saying that during the Durham game, she gave like a really good halftime talk and mm. then they went and scored right off of it. So it's so easy to see that she's such a great leader. She's so well-spoken. I'm always so impressed by what she has to say. So, yeah, it's just great seeing how well they handle these type of things because it could go anyway. Like, right. we've seen really bad backlash with other clubs, and I think the, well, the way that they've handled it over there was just probably the best way you could do it. Yeah, I think so. And, and you just look at Remy Allen's Twitter. I follow her on Twitter, and, you know, the positive messages that she puts out, her feed and what she talks about and the performances that she's put in this season – um, you can just tell she she's one of those women that you want on your side when, especially when you go in for for a title. And they're the kind of personalities that bring the group together in tough times, and and get you over the line. And that's why I'm confident in saying that I do think that they will they will get the promotion this year. I'd like to know what Leicester City are feeding their number eight because both of them are amazing. <laughs> yeah, they are um, fantastic players. Um, I know the chef at Leicester as well. He's still the same guy. Um, so the food's good. Everyone's doing well. And we, you know, we want to. I think on the men's side, you know, the goal is to finish in the top four. That's clear. I think we're in a position where we can push on and do that. Obviously, we'll want to go as far in the FA Cup as possible. Um, it'd be great to beat Manu at the weekend. And hopefully, on the women's side, they win the league. That's looking definitely possible. And, and they they go a little further in the FA Cup. So and, and it, you will look back and you will think, wow, what a fantastic season for, for both the teams. Yeah, like it's just so nice seeing all of this. And if we do get that promotion, do you see our women's side being a regular side in the WSL? Do you see them kind of really challenging everyone? Or 
How do you think it's going to go? Yeah, well, I uh, I hope so. I uh, you, you would hope so. I mean, they've they've got some fantastically talented players. They've already played a couple of WSL sides this season. Yeah. Right. And yeah, and perform, City. Yeah. yeah, and perform well against them. Um, so I think maybe Jonathan would look at probably bringing in a few more players if he could to to bolster his squad. But I'm a big believer in the get, you know the women that get you there. They've got to they've got to have a, a fair chance of playing at that level. Um, and as I say, they've played against WSL sides before and performed really well. So hopefully they, you know, I you look at it and you would think, well, it would be similar to the, to the men's side. You know, we come up from the championship, we keep a nucleus of players, we add a few players, um, and and hopefully they, they can do well next season if they go up. I have no doubt whatsoever with how amazing they've been playing that <laughs> if they get into the WSL, I see great things coming their way. So, And plus, we've already got some players with us that have played in the WSL on different yeah. sides there. So I think we've also got that as a bit of a benefit. But overall, it's just yeah. such a talented squad. So I have no doubt in them. Yeah. And, they, and with the girls that have played in the WSL before, they've got that experience. Mm -hmm. Um, to take into that next year. Still four games to go. I still think they will they'll win those last four games. But it, obviously, it'll be difficult. If you're at the top of the table, whoever you come up against, they raise their game a little bit because they're playing top of the table. So it's going to be it's going to be tough. But they've already shown. I think they've got the mentality and the skill set to be able to cope with with the best sides in the league. So hopefully, they go the rest of the season. Um, unbeaten and and they get promoted. Yeah, I, I, th I think for me, um, is is the the good thing they have got is is when they're putting games to bed pipes, they'll score two or three, and they've got that killer mentality, and they'll put six or seven past them and not even think second guess about it. And I think that killer mentality is just doing them so well. And every single game, the Saints Hammer, it's a message to the WSL: we are left to see. And we're coming for you. Yeah, and that's that's how I felt when they've played WSL sides. You know, in that Man City game, all you hear about at the minute in women's football is how good this Man City side are. They're going to beat everyone. It's similar to the men's side. And Leicester City went there and performed so well. And it was it was really great to see. And I think it it proved to the to the women that are that are in our side that they can play against that kind of quality and compete. So hopefully, you know, when they go up, we'll start using that term without getting too confident. But when they go up, that they'll be able to compete uh, week in, week out in the WSL. And, you know, that will raise the profile again for for, for Leicester and uh, the women's game. So it's, it's it feels great at the minute to be involved in, in sport and talking about sport in this city, it, it feels, you know, so important at the minute. Yeah, and just kind of touching on talking about Man City a bit. When that game happened, I remember seeing like WSL fans saying like, oh, this is going to be easy for them. They're going to put at least five in against Leicester because we're just viewed as a championship side. And like there's fans that clearly don't watch our games. But then we went out there and we definitely made it a lot harder for them. And now it's become... Oh, Leicester aren't just this championship side. I want to see Leicester get promoted. So many WSL fans are like, come to the WSL. We want to see you guys up here. So I we're definitely making statements as a club. Yeah, we are. And and what that will be is fans like to see good teams that play good football. And Jonathan, that's what Jonathan's created uh, at Leicester City. And, and, and that's why I said to him when I seen him, I said, mate, it's, it, honestly, it's been an incredible, you know, to watch the journey um, that he's been on since they, since they became professional has been tremendous. They, they play good football. They've got good players. Um, so hopefully when they do get promoted, they, they really make an assault on, on the top end of the table. I would think, I don't think he'd want to go in there and just, you know, sort of, you know, just making up the numbers to try and, you know, finish just above the relegation spots. I think he he will really want to go. He's a, he seems a, a really young, ambitious guy, clearly a great coach. Um, so, you know, I wish him the best moving forward and we'll see how he gets on. 
Yeah, I think I think he's got a great coaching team as well there, isn't he? And the Heskey's there as well. And they all seem to work well together and know the girls inside out. And like I said earlier, the girls have got that mentality that there's a few of them that are leaders, the rest that are coming in just seem to know what the ethos of that club is and they just fit into that family and, and it works so well for, for the women as well as the men's. And I think as we've said many times on here is that the future is really, really bright for our team. And I know that Hannah will probably talk about Beaver Drive at some point because we were seem to mention it in most of our podcasts that <laughs> a lot of the women's teams in the championship don't have them for kind of facilities. Mm. And when there was a lot of frost and they didn't play for six, seven weeks, I know, I know that ours were training day in, day out at Beaver Drive inside as well as outside. And I think them facilities and the club buying into this women's team can do good for Leicester, which they are doing. I think I think it's amazing of what the club are doing for my personal point of view. Yeah, I think I think you know, we've got a lot to thank the, the football club for, but especially Susan Whelan. I know that she's really, you know, drove um, and had this as a, a sort of ambition for a while to really bring the women's game in house and to give the best facilities possible, the best equipment. And I thought it was a master stroke getting Emil involved. You know, having someone of his um, international status, really, uh, and his his name associated with Leicester City to to join the women's side as an ambassador, I thought was, was brilliant. And the experience that he brings and the support that he, he obviously gives to the coaching staff is, has been brilliant. Yeah, I kind of wanted to mention that um, it's just, I think it's another big statement. So I'm, I'm wanting to ask you, just out of curiosity, having Heskey joining the women's side as an ambassador and kind of being in a bit of a staff coaching role, what do you think that kind of means looking at fan, fans of the men's side, like looking at women's football and seeing, oh, Heskey's working with them. What do you think that like kind of puts out there? Yeah, I think it puts a positive message out on how the club is taking it so seriously because a lot of fans, I think, I still think that that some fans might think, ah, oh, the women's game, like you spoke about earlier, Hannah, that, um, that they don't see it as serious as the men's side. And, you know, by putting a meal in that position, I think the club made a huge statement to say, this is how seriously we're taking the women's side of the game. And then the next step was to announce that um, Beaver Drive was going to be the home for the women's game. Another massive statement, I thought, because, I mean, I'm not too up to date with all the, I mean, especially the WSL sides and where they train, but not many of them can have a training ground better than Beaver Drive that has been the home uh, of Leicester City's training for the last, you know, 100 years. And, and the men's side has been in top flight football for so long. And those kind of facilities helped Leicester City men win the Premier League. So it's unbelievable facilities uh, because they could have sold that off. That's a prime piece of land. The club could have sold that off for many millions to, to housing companies or whatever. And they didn't. They kept it for the women's side. And it, it gives you um, huge hope in the future that they're going to continue um, to support the women's side of the game. And hopefully we are fighting it out, as the men are doing at the minute, in the WSL against the best sides in the league. Yeah, this club is making, it's like we keep saying, so many statements. But I think Leicester City are the perfect example right now for showing when you invest into a women's side and when you kind of show that you actually care about your women's side, mm. like it's so much success comes your way. They went from finishing seventh last season to being professionalized to now being top of the league with only one loss all season. Like it's, they're just being the perfect example for other clubs globally. Yeah, without doubt. I mean, you you in Canada and the, the women's side of the game out there and in obviously in the USA is is huge. And they they really get good support, fantastic players. Um, and it's spoken about a lot more over there, right? Like the women's game? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, here in Canada, I feel like more people know Christine St. Clair's name than they would before, like, Alfonso Davies' time. That's, like, the one player you'd be able to name 
is she used to be plastered all over buses and like buildings and stuff. And our women's team is just definitely, I don't want to say too, too much, but <laughs> yeah, they're far more recognized than our men's. It's changing now, but yeah. But, you know, and I think that's the way this country will go. I do. I do truly believe that. And um, see what a lot of fans tend to do, I think. And they look at the men's side of the game and think, well, the women are not as good as the men. So but it, for me, the way I look at women's football is, yes, it's football, but it's it's not you can't you can't look at the women's game and try and put it against the men's game. It's mm -hmm. it's different. It is. It's just different. It's the same sport. But when so when I look at it through those eyes and that thinking, the the level and skill of the players is outstanding, and you can really get behind the girls and, and really enjoy watching the game. Because if people are looking at Manchester City and then thinking, "Wow, look how this team play! Incredible!" and then they look at how the the, the women's side play. And they think, well, they don't play as good as the men. So I've not got no time for the women. That's the problem that I think we've got. You know, the women's is its own game. You have to look at it in its own game. You can't put it against the men's game. You have to look at it in its own sort of scope and, and you know, the world that that's in and how it's growing and evolving. And that's what's really I think the, the journey that the women's game is on at the minute is really special and there's going to be so much more fans um, come across. And that's why I'm so behind it because in this city that we live in, to have, you know, a great, it used to be great, the, the Tigers, the, the rugby, and that's sort of coming back into, into fruition on that side. The men's, the men's side are doing fantastic. The women are doing fantastic. It's just great for, because I'm a big advocate of sport, right? And the learning and the, the the discipline and the enjoyment that be, that can be gained through sport, and to have another team in Leicester that we can all get behind and support, is so powerful, and especially for young girls growing up, you know, and that in inspiring that I spoke about, and that empowerment of young, you know, young girls, young women, is fantastic, and that's why we need to push it as much as we can. Absolutely. Can't even push it too much. <laughs> no, we've got to keep. We've got to get behind it. We really have. Yeah, and, and I think that that's what obviously we're trying to do is push it as best we can. But like you say, um, and probably a question for you, Pops, is is how how can we make that transition to get some of the men's fans across and and, and involved with with the women's game? Because um, if you if, if you look at the highlight reel of all the women's goals this season. Probably forty percent of them are absolute worldies. That if you saw, if they appeared in the men's game, they'd be on Sky Sports. They'd be running a reel for the next four years. Um, so the the quality yeah. of football is immense. There's, less have got absolute ballers in the team. That when they get the ball, you get excited. The same as when Tillemans gets the ball, you get excited. Remy Allen gets the ball, you get excited. Hannah Kane gets the ball, you get excited because they are them great players. It's just that how do we start to transition some of the fans across? Because we know there is going to be some resistance from some areas, but we're going to try and push this as best as we can. Mm. I, I honestly think it's mindset uh, and looking at it in... They just look at men's football and think, right, this is the standard. And if you're not up to this or, or anywhere near this standard, I'm not, I'm not interested in it. And you have to look at it in its own world. I really do believe that. And I hope I'm not talking out of term saying, because I know it's the same game. I know it's the same game, but, you know, the men's game has evolved for, for years and years and years. And I'm such a big advocate for it as well, because my mom is the one that taught me how to play football from four years old up until about 12. And then when my dad realised that I was good, then he got involved. But before that, he wasn't interested. It was my mom. And my mom was played football all throughout my childhood so my mum played for a football team so I'm that's why uh, I've always been around women's football as well I went to watch my mum's game from when I'm four or five years old and she was she was a good player she was a right winger like me and my mum's the one that taught me when my dad didn't think I was good enough so he, he didn't come out in the back garden with me my mum did 
And that's why it's important for me. But I look at it in it in its own realm. I really do. It's the women's game is the women's game. And when you watch a game and you understand that, then you see the skill, you see the talent, and you can be, wow, what a goal. Beautiful football, the way they linked it, the way they moved it between the lines. Now, if you're trying to set that standard against the way Man City play or, or Leicester City men's team, you you may look at it and think, it's not as good, so I don't want to watch it. But you, for me, that's wrong. And I don't watch women's football like that. So that's why. And I think if if more people were in the mindset, I think that's how you would get the crossover because it it's its own game in its own right, I think. That's such a, I love your story of how you're brought up into football with it being from your mom. That's just, that's so awesome because I feel like that's not something you hear a lot. Yeah, my, my, I mean, my story was my dad came out in the garden and he's always wanted a footballer for a son because my oldest brother was a professional cricketer. But my dad was sort of like a really good footballer when he was young. So his older boy was a cricketer. So the next son that was born was me. I'm the middle child. And he was like, right, he's going to be the footballer. So he'd play football with me in the garden. And apparently, can't remember, but from three or four years old, I was shocking. I just used to pick the ball up. So my dad said, oh, he's never going to be a footballer. So my mum was the one that used to take me park in the nights and the evenings. And my, and then once I got into Leicester and it became more serious, that's when my, my dad got back involved. But it was my mum that started it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll give her full credit. <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. And just kind of touching on your points of like, we need to stop putting them together and just view them as the men and women are not going to be at the same standard we can't just be sitting there comparing them i think that's such a great way to put it because on social media you're constantly seeing people like i'll never watch women's football it's horrible there's no like revenue with it no one ever watches it i'm just kind of like well if your argument that no one watches it why don't you start watching it like you can't say there's not enough support if you're not willing to support it and the thing that i always say is it's funny because there's people out there that are so against it. And at the end of the day, it's like, no, I'd rather just watch Leicester men's. Like, I cannot watch women's football. It's like, why? Like, you're supporting the same team. Mm. I'm not asking you to go out and support Man United women or Birmingham women or anything. Like, It's just, yeah. it's the same club. And they have the same ideologies and everything. Exactly. And, and the analogy that I would use is, so first of all, I'm before a Leicester City fan. I am a football fan, so I enjoy football, but I watch every game in the in the mindset of the realm that I'm seeing it in. So I can enjoy a game of football between primary school kids that, that aren't good at football, boys and girls, mixed, because I used to do these games all the time, right? And I'm refereeing the game, and I can really enjoy the game, but if I was watching that game and I'm putting those children up against academy players that I'm training at the same time that are of the same age, I'm going to, I'm going to turn my back on this game and say, it's nowhere near the same standard. I'm not involved in this. No, I love the game of football and I watch it in the world that it, that it's in. And women's football shouldn't be compared to men's football. It's his, it's his own entity. And when you watch the football in that realm, I think it's, it's great to see and you can enjoy it you can appreciate the skill level the talent the goals as james says um and and that's the way i choose to watch any football match i think that's kind of the way i do see the women's game one of the comments that i see on social media a lot and i really hate is all the men's team would destroy these i don't (laughs) see the point in it it's a pointless comment and i just think to myself they're totally different games. If you actually sat there and watched them for 90 minutes, you'd see that the women's game is totally different from the men's game. Mm. And they've both got their own merits. And that's how I watch it. They are both great games, but they're totally different. As part of it, they're totally different games. The tactics are different. The way they're played is different. I just think the more people that see it that way, rather than, oh, the men's team will just destroy these, I think it's going to be the better for us. It's just getting that kind of education piece across. And, and as Hannah said, 
getting them to see that point of view. Even if it's, they just watch one game, they'll see that that we are right. And, and this game is actually really good for what it is. Yeah, and, and Hannah's point is, is so true. It's Leicester City. I don't care if uh, whoever's playing, it's Leicester City, so I'm supporting the team. You know, that's a that's another point to make. And um, it's just, I just, I don't know. I don't, as we, as we get to this point in, you know, I'm 40 this year and I don't think I've supported Leicester since I'm eight years old. There's never been a better time to be a Leicester City fan. Obviously, we won the league, but th- but this 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 time now. I mean, you've got the men's side, you've got the women's side, you've got the owners that we have, you've got the manager that we have, the players. You know, everything just seems great at the minute for for the two football clubs in this year. So good, <laughs> feels so good. <laughs> we got to celebrate it, Hannah. We have. We got to talk about it, you know. You know, and it's and, and owning a owning an academy in this city that hopefully will will. So far, we've got six girls, six women, um, so fifteen year olds that will join this September twenty twenty one. At the minute, we've got six that could grow. We're hoping it does, um, and you know, we've got fifty five, sixty young boys. So, and it's a football academy, so. You know, the fact that Leicester City women and Leicester City men are doing so well, it's it's great for us as well because people are talking about football and these these kids that are coming into my academy um, have got both men and women to really look up to and aspire to. So it's just it's just great at the minute. And and I have to say that I'm not the best on the radio. But I think you can tell with my commentary that I just love it. And it just anything I can get involved in to do with sport, I love and try and let that passion for the sport, number one. But this sitter, Leicester, number two, like come out is what is what I'm all about. I can even tell right now how much you love it. And it's so nice to see. You do. It's just sport, isn't it? It's just, it is just sport. I just love it. And, you know, even the riders, you know, one thing that I will say, I know this is a football show. I have never been to a riders game. I can't believe it. I'm always too busy on a, on a Friday night, but I've never been to a riders game, never been to a Tigers game. <laughs> but so, so, Talking of the riders, I went, I think two seasons ago, was my first ever game um, to watch them play. Absolutely loved it. Well, um, this is well. Owen used to commentate on the riders before he moved over to the football full time. He used to commentate on the riders, and he was always used to telling me how exciting the games are. So that's one of my things this year. You know, when we come out of this pandemic, I'm going to be going to more riders games, more Tigers games. Um, obviously, they need to be on a different day from when I'm working on the radio. But it's just sport, Hannah. To my, I, well, it wasn't even a question, was it? I just started on a rant. <laughs> <laughs> it's just sport. I love it. It's a good rant, so I'm happy that you gave it to us. <laughs> <laughs> such a good perspective. I wasn't sure if James was going to jump no. in there. <laughs> but such a good perspective to look at things. And I'm just going to be living my life now as it's just sport. It's just a sport. It's the way forward, right? We got to enjoy ourselves while while we're here, and sport gives us so much enjoyment. And um, all my kids play it, all of them, all different sports as well. The youngest one is at Burton at the minute, so he's on his little footballing journey. He's just turned twelve. Um, so let's just hope he's not got knees like me. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome to hear. I kind of wanted to ask one uh, other question. We'll probably wrap up pretty soon here, but just going back to your academy and how you have some young girls joining, I'm friends with people who work with um, not necessarily agencies, but just kind of scouting people. And Mm. right now, girls are just losing so much drive Mm. within football because of this pandemic. And as well as like, it sometimes feels like you don't really have as much of a backing being like a girl going into women's football. Cause it, like you said before, it feels like it's just a men's driven game. Mm. So what advice would you give to young girls who are like wanting to go up and wanting to do this as a career? 
Great question. Um, I mean, one thing that we did with the academy, we've got so everyone that was was joining our academy, but then the 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 third lockdown. This is the third lockdown now. I'm losing count. The third lockdown hit. We did um, sort of we created WhatsApp groups for for everyone that was joining the academy. So including including the women, and we put out um training sessions to keep them engaged on a daily basis which sounds quite simple but it was really difficult because trying to find and record new content every day but to try and keep them um engaged and enthused throughout that tr time to try and get them through because i know how difficult it will be and especially uh, but the advice that that i would give is you know, and I, I say it to my own kids: you, you, you've got to, you have, you've got to follow your dreams. Mm -hmm. And you know, I did a, I did a, um, a, a Zoom similar to this, but I did a Zoom for the Leicester City Academy recently. It was the under, the under twelves. So it was all the kids of the under twelves of of the boys' academy at Leicester City. Um, just going on, and one of the things that. I wanted to get across to them because I did this when I was younger and I thought it was really important. And I, I think it ties into your question is, so I, I, you know, who do I have to become to achieve all that I want? And from a very young age, I promise you, and someone must have said it to me when I was really young, but it always stayed with me. And I, I've always used that as a as a um, sort of go-to saying in my life. And I think it's really important for young people. So I try and share it as much as I can. So what I mean by that is, if I, if I want to get to be a professional footballer or, or I want to improve at football, I look at someone who's got a, a, a more ability than me. Let's keep it short at the time. I mean, I could go to Ronaldo, but let's keep it short. I need, I, I need to look at someone who's got more ability than me. What are they doing? What are they thinking about? What, how are they training? What are the things that they're watching? What are the things that they're reading? Because it, if they've got to where I want to get to, I've got to do things that they do that have got them to that place. So do you understand what I mean? I say it a lot to the guys in my FSD academy. Some of the guys are telling me they want to be professional footballers, but they're eating KFC every day. <laughs> they're, they're having a beer at night. They're having a gamble. They're not training or turning up for training as often as they should do. You know, you can't tell me you want to be a professional footballer if you're not living like a professional footballer right now, because that's what gets you there. So... That's the advice that I would give, you know, all the time I'm looking at, at different people and think, wow, he's where I want to be, right? What's he doing? And I think that's a really good question to ask yourself when you're young and you're getting a little bit um, disappointed with, with the way things are going. You need to look at where you want to go and think, right, you know, how how is that person got there because replicate it and you it will help you i think i went around the houses with that but <laughs> hopefully you know what i meant <laughs> no that's great advice you got me motivated and i just sit around <laughs> so maybe i'll start changing some stuff up <laughs> thank you so that's much good. no problem anytime you guys have been great this has been brilliant You've made it easy, so thank you. Yeah. <laughs> no, Crazy. thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. And and you know what I would say? This is my – it's not advice because um, what I would say is to people just before I go is I think one thing about, you know, whether it's women's football, whether it's racism, whether it's LGBT, whether, you know, people s tend to be a little – worried and frightened to open up about things they don't know too much about mm -hmm. you understand what i mean so if i if i talk to someone about racism and and they clam up because they think oh god i don't know too much about it and they they fear they might say something wrong now me coming out tonight and me suggesting that i look at the women's game in a in a different 
way that I look to the men's game. And that's how I get enjoyment from it, support it, want to try and drive it. Some people might listen to that and think, why are you separating it from the men's game? It's still football. That's out of order. So do you know what I mean? But I thought it's important tonight that I'm honest. So some people might watch this podcast and think, I can't believe he's just said that. But this is this is my advice to people. The way we have to drive things forward, racism, LGBT, women's football, disabilities, whatever it is that we feel we don't know too much about, so we, sh we shouldn't open our voice and talk about it, you should. Because hopefully, if you've got if you've got people on the other end receiving it, and they're not gonna, I think we live in a society now where people are too quick to point a finger and say that's terrible, that's wrong. Um, but there's no learning done when when that happens. Uh, so uh, that's what I wanted to say as well. I think Absolutely. we need to I we need to talk about all these all these things a lot more. Yeah, well, thank you so much for coming on and providing your perspective. I'm not sure if James has any final. No, I just want to say thank you. It's been a pleasure. Um, it was we said we were going to do about 20 minutes, but oh, sorry. <laughs> it's ranted. too easy to talk to you. Like I said, bye <laughs> bye. I've ranted on again, and I, James. Sorry, mate. <laughs> it's been a really, really fun interview. Uh, thanks for coming on. Uh, we really appreciate it, and we'd love to have you on again. Um, obviously, when we've been champions. <laughs> Come on, let's have it. Thanks for having me on, guys. Really appreciate it. Yeah, thank you so much. It was great getting your perspectives. And as a like I said, as a fan of the women's game, what you said means the world. And I hope more people will be like you with looking at things. And hopefully you'll help change some minds. So thank you so much for coming on. And thank you again. <laughs> I hope so. Thanks. Thanks, Hannah. Thanks for having me. Thanks, James. Take care. Take care. Cheers, guys.